will be the first to admit and tell you that there is a disconnect between the stock market and the present economy. However, if the environment as a whole is underperforming, it will be a headwind. It will be a tough struggle. We will now go further into the three reasons why are stocks crashing. Three factors are causing the stock market to tumble. First, increasing interest rates and high inflation. According to the Federal Reserve, will harm stock prices. Second, the BRE ratio must be reduced. We are already seeing mean reversion, or the eventual return of asset prices to their long-term averages. In this case, it will be the PRE ratio. The macro environment is the third component. Hello everyone, welcome to Wealth of Wisdom. In this video, we're going to talk about why are stocks crashing? An explanation to stock market crash. If you are new to this channel, do like and subscribe to the channel. Again, I'll describe everything as though your level of stock market understanding is somewhere between an informed and novice. And you already know there's nothing wrong with being a beginner, and this is a fantastic place to learn. We'll begin with inflation and interest rates. If you're an intermediate level investor, I'll probably fill in some of the gaps. This video will not teach you anything if you are an experienced investor. Okay, let's start with interest rates and inflation. We are all aware of the rising place of inflation. It's nothing to be proud of, particularly if it's reached its highest point in 41 years. To offset this, the Federal Reserve is boosting interest rates. As a result, rising interest rates will slow the economy and demand, halting price inflation. Future gains will be worthless as interest rates climb. This is why the stock market is destroying underperforming IT companies and growth firms. I'll make everything very plain to you. I believe the best way to demonstrate this is to provide an example. Assume you were given the opportunity to invest $2 million in a company and knew that if you did, you would profit $200,000 over the following 10 years. Please tell me what interest rate the majority of people obtain on their savings accounts. As a result, you deposit a million dollars in the bank. Most people's interest rates are less than 1%, making them effectively nothing. You have no interest income. As a result, you deposit a million dollars in a bank. How much money will you receive? How much interest income can you anticipate to get over the next 10 years? In the circumstance, you will therefore be close to zero. As a consequence, in our hypothetical case, Paying $2 million for this firm and expecting to make $200,000 over the following 10 years is superior to leaving your money in the bank and earning nothing. The company's expected earnings seem to be rather appealing. But if interest rates change, for example, if the interest rate on your savings account climbs to 5%, the narrative would be drastically altered. In that case, you may now deposit your $2 million in a bank and begin generating $100,000 in interest income every year, which will total $1 million after 10 years. That would be neglecting the concept of compounding. As a result, in this case, future revenues of this firm seem to be a terrible investment in an environment of rising interest rates. If interest rates rise to 5%, I would only be willing to pay $400,000 for the business, less than $200,000 initially intended. This is because if I paid $400,000 for the business, it would earn $200,000 in income for me, a 50% gain. So if I invested $300,000, I would make $150,000 in return. After all, what is the alternative? I could easily put $2 million in my savings account, which currently yields 5%, and earn $1 million garnering me a 50% return. Naturally, it is oversimplified, but you get the point. What happens to the value of future earnings when interest rates rise? 
And why are growth stocks unprofitable? They are unprofitable growth stocks and technology businesses since they are now losing money while claiming to be lucrative in the future. They are suffering more than others and are losing everything. I want to be clear that some industries such as financials will benefit from rising interest rates. But you shouldn't run out and buy financial stocks after seeing this video since the market is forward-looking and people have already factored this in. But it is in the future. Example of present value, time value of money, discounted cash flows, and opportunity costs are offered for beginners. Before we proceed to the second reason why are stocks crushing, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. The second reason for the stock market's fall is that the PRE ratio must return to its mean. I'll simply simplify and break things down for you. The PRE ratio is calculated by dividing the stock price by the earnings per share. If you accepted an offer to buy a firm for $100 and it make $10 in profit every year, the PRE ratio would be 10. The price is calculated by dividing $100 by $10,000 in yearly earnings. Yielding a PRE ratio of 10, a high PRE ratio is often seen as an indication of overvaluation. As a result, if you get an offer to buy a company for $100 and it produces a $1 profit every year, the PRE ratio will be $100. If the PRE ratio is low, you would have to labor for 100 years to recoup your $100 because it is often undervalued. If you get an offer to buy a firm for $100 and they earn a $50 profit each year, according to the PRE ratio, it will take you 2 years to recoup your $100 investment. Allow me to share some data with you now that we've established that the historical PRE ratio of the S&P 500 varies from 13 to 15 depending on the year or time period under consideration. The current PRE ratio of the S&P 500 is 19. The S&P ratio will be close to 20 in the second quarter of 2022. We're simply reverting to the average because the PRE ratio has been declining over the last two years from above 30. But before you assume that the crash is over because we're approaching the average of 19 PRE ratio, consider this. If companies earn less money, their earnings will be the denominator and the PRE ratio will go down, which means the PRE ratio will group and there may be more downside risk. Finally, the PRE ratio was just too high, and as stock prices have fallen, the PRE ratio has returned to historical norms. The third reason why are stocks crashing is that you must be aware of the micro environment. What exactly does it imply when the tide rises and all boats are lifted? I mean, all of you cryptocurrency speculators are aware of it and have direct experience with it. If the value of Bitcoin grows, you will the value of 99% of other currencies. So will the value of 99% of other currencies. Cryptocurrencies will thrive whether Bitcoin is performing well or not. Likewise, with even if you aren't investing in Bitcoin, you should be mindful of its performance while buying or selling cryptocurrencies since it will have an influence on your altcoins even if it doesn't approach 90% or whatever percentage of all coins. The stock market will go through the same process, and I'll reiterate that the two aren't connected. Nonetheless, if the present economy is failing, the stock market will confront challenging circumstances if the Fed does not intervene and begin printing additional money. Don't fight the Fed was a popular saying throughout the past 10 years. Most people are aware that the Federal Reserve has been printing massive quantities of money, flooding the market with so much cash that the value of all financial assets, including stocks and bonds, has increased. When there is so much money in the economy, you have to put it to work someplace. But this is no longer the case because the Federal Reserve stopped generating money two months ago. The party is done but there is still more to come. It will only worsen. 
Things are only going to become worse since the Federal Reserve printed so much money. They will begin taking the money from the system within the next three months. Don't fight the Fed because they'll take back $47.5 billion every month at first, then $95 billion after that. But let me be clear about something. The Federal Reserve does not enjoy literally creating money in our money monetary system. The U.S. government creates money by participating in deficit spending, and banks then lend it out. The Federal Reserve, on the other hand, is fundamentally participating in the scheme. To put it simply, they are printing money. Interest rates are increasing as a consequence of the Federal Reserve's quantitative tightening. This will put further pressure on stocks, bonds, and cryptocurrency. I hope this helps you understand why the stock market is collapsing. We've reached the end of another video and thank you for watching. I hope you have learned why are the stocks crushing. If you like this video, do give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below. Thank you and goodbye.